What's up guys, today we will be finishing up the transmission related stuff. So one, that includes replacing the manual transmission fluid, which I think it hasn't been done yet. Second thing will be the hybrid racing detent spring. And then the last thing is the hybrid racing shifter cable bushings. Now that the car is jacked up, here's the drain plug for the manual transmission. It's on the driver's side. Just above that and towards the back of the trans is the fill plug. I used an 18 millimeter socket on a breaker bar to loosen it. Make sure your camera isn't nearby or this'll happen. It was either over torqued or just never opened. Loosen the fill plug so the fluid can drain properly. Use a 3 8 inch drive to undo the drain bolt. Obviously make sure there's a pan to catch the fluid. Once it's all drained, screw on the drain plug with a new washer and torque it to 29 pound feet. Now remove the fill plug completely. The fit takes 1.5-ish quarts, so I got two quarts from the dealer. I got this pump on Amazon for $10, which will make this job a lot easier. It threads into the bottle itself, so there's no need for messing around with adapters. You can either snake the tube from the top of the engine or the bottom like I did here. Start pumping the fluid in. You're gonna use the whole quart minimum, so no need to worry about overfilling right now. And this is the second quart. After about 1.5-ish quarts, you'll start to see the fluid come out. That's how you know when to stop. Screw the fill plug back on and torque it to 33 pound-feet. Now onto the hybrid racing bushings and detent springs. First, we remove the intake. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. Remove this hard line and loosen the throttle body clamp. There's also a sensor on the back of the intake to unclip. This air duct is just held by this one clip. A 10 mm socket will remove the battery tie down and the terminals. Now remove the battery. This is actually a lot heavier than it looks. Maybe I'll do a lighter battery in the future. The battery tray is held by these three 12 mm bolts. Sorry for the misfocused shots. Remove these two clips that are attached to the tray. The transmission mount bracket is held in by four 14 mm bolts. Remove these after you support the trans with the jack underneath. These bolts were stuck on pretty good. Now remove the bracket and set it aside. Here are the two 12 mm hollow bolts that hold the spring detent. Be careful and make sure to hold onto the spring and the washer. Here are the springs side by side. You can see the original spring is a bit shorter. The upgraded spring is 80% stiffer, which will make the gear engagement much more direct. Carefully put the bolts back in with the new springs and torque them to 16 pound feet. Don't mind the sensor, I disconnected it to get more room for the bolt next to it. So here's one of the shifter cables. Remove the cotter pin and remove the two washers. Lift the cable. I use a screwdriver to pry out the bushing. You can see the new bushing is completely redesigned with a spherical bearing. On the bottom side of the bushing, there's a groove. Slide the provided retaining clip onto the groove to keep the bushing in the cable. And install the new cotter pin. The other bushing is closer to the firewall, so it's a bit tricky to film. Again, remove the cotter pin and the washers. Pry off the original bushing and slide the new one on. Again, carefully install the retaining clip on the bottom, work your way around the groove. You'll eventually hear a click when it's all in. Place the last cotter pin on and run through the gears to make sure it all works. Now just install everything back on, same thing as before, just in reverse. And 
we're done with the transmission mods. Finally, we have the shifter cable bushings and then we also have the stronger detent springs. The shifter itself made everything stiffer and tighter, which is good, but it was just a little harder to get into gear. So the springs actually spring it forward and backward into gear, which actually makes it a lot easier. I mean, the parts that I just installed makes shifting this type of shifter a lot easier. I highly recommend doing the three together if you can. If anything, I would do the other two first because it's still easy to drive. This is still easy to drive too when you just have the shifter. It's just, it takes a little bit more work, but having all three together makes it really, really good. Oh, it's so much easier. It's a lot easier to shift into gear. This is highly recommended. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.